Dark Knight the Metal number one. All right, finally it's here, and we have multiple covers. This, of course, being the most famous of it, because, you know, 80s metal rules. And uh, they do, of course, want to lead off with Wonder Woman because she's so hot right now. You know, and then you have this, which basically, th there's something in the book that you can base this on, because it starts off with them in a gladiator arena, and in fact, at one point in this book, Batman does ride a dinosaur. So it doesn't look like that, but there it is. This has to do with so some sort of mysticism. But what this book really does seem to, to do is to make everybody who missed the death of Hawkman earlier scramble to go get those issues because, you know, now they're worth something because it, ex it explains a whole bunch about the nth metal, which is, uh, uh, of course, the metal in question. Like I said, it starts off in a gladiatorial arena, and it turns out that, uh, oh, what is his name? Mongol has put some armor on them that inhibits their abilities to make it harder for them to fight. This is the opening salvo, and it's just something I've noticed a lot of books are doing. It's a decent action sequence. It sets up all the players if you're not used to who they are already, if you've happened to be living under a rock for the last 75 years. But uh, overall, it doesn't really serve anything else in the story. Um, I guess it pays fan service to 90s kids because ultimately, Batman says, no, just submit to these creatures. Don't fight. It'll be easier. And then everybody's like, what? Okay. And they trust him enough to do that. They get all wrapped up and then brought together into one big Justice League Megazord which, once again, I think is just to play fan service to any 90s kids who may be reading Justice League. And then it does this thing. Oh, my gosh, look. It's announcing metal at DC. It's, a, it's like a movie. It's awesome. This is where we all should be just, you know, quiet and listening to everybody eat their nachos while it goes through the opening credits. How jaded do you have to be to be outside of Earth's atmosphere and not be like, oh, my gosh, look, it's Earth. It's amazing. And says so like, yeah. Okay, let's keep talking about our mission. Sometimes it seems like they're not affected by the weight of what they're actually doing. So anyway, he, Batman gets a call from Alfred. A big old mountain of rock has landed in Gotham. Of course, Batman feels bad about it. But the Justice League goes to investigate, and on the inside, they find some sort of pod. And this is where things stall. I'm talking just exposition... Ex the exposition, let's begin the exposition, look out sin. I mean, it is seriously just talk, 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 talk. Now, it's interesting. I'm not going to say it's not, but show don't tell at least a little bit of this, guys. I'm serious. Have you, have you been watching the pages go by as I'm talking? It is literally a book of people standing around explaining what's happened and what is going to happen in this series. That's it. So don't expect this to be any kind of action pack. Now, if you are into the characters and if you have a history of DC Universe, you're going to get a lot out of this because you understand who and all what all the players are. They do interrupt with a little bit of action with uh, Red Tornado, and then we get to the Batman riding a dinosaur scene, and there is no way you can't make that cool. I mean, uh, you could do this as a stick figure, and that would just look cool. But that's all this book really is. It's a bunch of exposition in order to set up the story with an action scene at the beginning and middle. And then, of course, a surprise reveal at the end, which really did surprise. And it makes me want to pick up the, ne the next issue. I'm very well versed in the DC Universe, so I got a lot out of this. But if you're not, you may definitely want to pick up the first two issues and kind of bone up. Because they go deep cuts in this book. Anyway... Uh, that's it. That's my whole review of this. I know it's a quick one, but really, I could go through pages and pages of talk, but that would be it. That's, that is the most clearest I could be about this book. It is good. It's better if you know the DC Universe because it is all exposition except for two, uh, two scenes. And it does make me want to see the uh, the rest of the series, especially once Sandman shows up. But if you're not, I think you'll have a little trouble if you're not uh, well-versed in DC. 
and DC Comics mythology. But that's just my opinion. What is yours? Have you read this? Did you pick it up, go home like I did and said, well, I got them digitally, so I was already home. I'm kind of lying on that one. But what did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you like me where you're like, it's good, but oh my gosh, these people talk a lot. You know, I mean, how? what did you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, you want to see more, we've got a lot more. Do you, I just realized we're up to over 400 videos already. Holy Toledo, there's a lot of content. Don't watch the earlier stuff. The first few uh, videos we did, it was just me, and it sucked. Anywho, uh, yeah, please click like, click share, click subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And also, don't forget to head on over to the Patreon page and vid me. Drop a dollar in the till. We have patron-only content, so you will get value for your dollar. This isn't one of those things like uh, buying a candy bar where it's all empty calories. You will get something. And we pour our heart and soul into it. Well, at least our heart. At least somebody's heart. I know there's hearts involved. Anyway, thank you to everybody who's going to do that. Thank you to everybody who already has done that. And to everyone, thank you very, very much for watching. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. Would you be my song and I'll be your sonnet? You be my chair and I'll surely sit on it. I'll bring the gin and you bring the tonic, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. There's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello. I think that you're smashing from head to toe. I'm telling you this just so that you know. If I am the raven, will you be my crow? A bee in my bonnet, hello.